I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, EJ Garcia. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? Uh, we're doing very well um, here in uh, Seoul, South Korea. Um, it's uh, 8.31 in the morning here, so we're, we're just uh, <laughs> getting up. It's definitely uh, a different we'll time zone. Wow. Yes, it's, uh, uh, we're, we're a day ahead. So we're kind of in the future. Yes. You um, are. And uh, it's a it's a brisk morning here. Wow. Just uh, fall is getting started. Mm. So my friend, please do tell me which of your talents is responsible for us meeting. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> for the past, I think uh, six years, I've I've been doing a bunch of different things. Um, I started. Uh, I used to teach English uh, at a women's university here in Seoul, South Korea, and and I quit teaching to do um, animal rights advocacy full time, mm. and I started doing that uh, with undercover work into South Korea's dog meat industry and and dog fighting and the exotic animal trade, and then ended up doing undercover work in factory farms in the U.S. Um, and did that for a while and now i'm running a plant-based restaurant here in seoul uh, so I, i've gone through being behind the camera <clears throat> to being behind uh in the kitchen uh baking and uh you know making burgers and things like that so i don't know and and i recently started podcasting so i'm, I'm just trying to do a lot of different things that 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 i enjoy hmm. um and maybe that that's how I got, you know, we, we, we came to be in touch. Yeah, it's definitely fascinating. Um, fascinating is definitely my keyword. Um, I'm not sure if I'll ever drop it, but I'm living in a zone where a lot of things that I encounter are fascinating, right? Um, I probably need to get some um, some others, right? But um, that is fascinating that everything that you've done thus far would allow us to connect, um, especially via a medium like LinkedIn, right? Um, and a podcast. So you have a podcast. Um, is it Woke Stutters? Yeah, it is. Yes, yeah. yes. It's yeah. called Woke Stutters and it's, it's a brand new podcast. Um, I, I've done four episodes. I started about a month and a half ago and I, I love talking and I, I love podcasts and listening to podcasts and I love having conversations about things that kind of don't have really answers to. Yeah. So even after a long discussion, you still sit there with the other person and you look at each other and you just kind of think, but we don't really know. Mm. Right. But at least, but at least we can just have discussion. Yeah. Um, it, those things really, really interest me. So I just thought, how about just starting a podcast? Yeah. And explain the name for me, please. Like woke stutters. Woke stutters. So when I was younger, I used to stutter a lot and I went to speech therapy for that. Um, I think uh, English is my second language. So I don't know if, if that has something to do with it. Um, just learning new languages all the time. And so I just and, and also just the word woke, uh, you know, uh, nowadays it's it's a very uh, trendy word, uh, even though it's 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 rooted in very deep you know, uh, social uh, injustice movements, um, especially in, uh, uh, in the United States, which is where I lived about eight years. Um, and, and I just thought it would be a cool name, like kind of like, you know, trying to learn about new things and getting and, and becoming aware of social issues around you in, in, a, in a humble way. Right. Um, just just trying to, to to be more aware. Uh, so kind of like stuttering your way into wokeness, I guess. Mm, I love it. I know there was an art Thanks. aspect of that. I knew it. I knew it. Like I listened to the podcast and I said, wow, this guy goes really deep. You having a conversation about um, um, when is it right to protest? Right. Yes. Um, yeah. So it was really fascinating. Oh, there's that word again. So it's really great listening <laughs> to what you were talking about and um, the way you brought it. Yeah. It's just one of those questions. Again, it's like the, the, there's no like what, what's the right way to protest? Like, you know, the, 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 there is an answer, but it's like it's it's shrouded by all this like political correctness and like um, just all this 
you know, racism and just these horrible things that are happening uh, that you just sit, you sit back and you're like, I just don't know what to do about this. Right. And it's yeah. really frustrating. So yeah. talking about it kind of helps. Yeah, it's a vent. It's an opportunity to vent. And um, sure. you, you definitely control it in a way that actually will help, I believe, um, because the opportunity to vent means it's not um, just like in the kitchen, a pressure cooker model of um, blowing up, right? Things blowing up um, because everything was just left to um, build pressure. Um, so I love what you're doing. Um, who did you learn the skill of... Um, it seems as though you're very um, approachable, right? Who did you learn that from? Oh, um, I think it's something that I didn't learn from anyone, but I kind of had to learn on my own, given my involvement in the animal rights community and the exposure I've had for the work that I've done. Like when you do any kind of social advocacy, like the most important thing is communication and how you communicate an idea can have can have a great impact on, you know, on, on changing someone's minds or opinions, or at least getting them to think about it. So I had to put myself in those situations, you know, to just speak to anybody about, you know, whatever I was advocating for. So I, I, I think I just kind of learned that on my own. Um, I'm actually an introvert, um, well, introvert, extrovert. I'm an introvert, but, but pretend to be an extrovert. I guess you, you can say it, I, I think about it that way. <laughs> So I, I don't really, I didn't really learn it from anybody. Uh, my, my, my parents are both very, you know, kind of quiet people. So I, I don't really know. It's just something I had to pick up in order, in order to do the, the work that I was doing or mm. that I'm still doing now. Yeah. You've done that. You've, you've made a decision that you needed to put on a personality, um, strength, if you would, if we call that extrovert aspect of the personality, the thing necessary to voice um, your concerns, to voice what you think is right. Now that you've done that and you've seen what that is like, why will you continue to repeat that skill in the midst of everything? No, I think it's extremely important to, uh, you know, put your thoughts, ideas, and your voice out there uh, because there's a lot of, it's, it's kind of like, you know, uh, uh, being the voice, being a voice for the voiceless, right? Being a voice for those who don't have one. Uh, I think it's extremely important and it's, 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 it's the voice, your voice, someone else's voice that, that helps change society for the better. Uh, it's, I think it's extremely important thing. Yeah, I think you just got your ta your tagline. Yeah, probably. I am a voice for the voiceless. Yeah, I, I, I got to put that on my profile. All right, so tell me one other thing that you've done, AJ, consistently over the last three years. Man, uh, I think I've been, uh, I'm also really into fitness. Uh, and, and I guess that's kind of more of like, like a personal thing. Uh, even though I'm, I'm, I'm a workaholic and I'm always working. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've tried to take care of myself physically and mentally in order to better you know, perform in the workplace and to be able to help as many people or help as many animals or change as many minds as possible. Um, I think a lot of people burn out really quickly uh, because they don't spend time to take care of themselves. Um, something that my wife <laughs> tends to do. Um, and so I, I think just staying, staying strong mentally, you know, meditating, exercising, uh, it's something that's very, very important to me. Yeah. How does it make you feel? Uh, I, I think it's the reason why I'm able to just, you know, do what I do, all the things that I do kind of nonstop. Um, it, it, it's, you know, it, it, it relieves a lot of stress uh, and, you know, it, it gives you something to look forward to. Um, it, it makes me feel fantastic. Mm. Yeah, that's my word. <laughs> oh, Fant fantastic. fantastic. <laughs> It's a good word. It's, it's a good word. Yeah, you know, and my mom listened to my podcast and she said, hey, it's amazing. I love it. I listened to about five or six episodes back to back. I would just say, you know, you probably need to expand your vocabulary with some of the words. I said, I know big words. It's just, it's really fascinating. It's fantastic. <laughs> Suggest to someone out there that's listening um, from the aspect of the introvert and and being an extrovert, at least putting on the costume when it's necessary, why they should do what you've done? You know, I, I think that it comes back to just being able to speak your mind freely and without the fear of being judged by others. Uh, I think that 
you know, society kind of installs this 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 weird kind of like wall between you and other people because you're afraid what someone will think of you. And once you stop caring about that, that makes everything that you want to do, everything that you want to say so much easier. Uh, and it just puts you in a better place, uh, you know, mentally and just out there in the world. Mm, love it. Amazing audience. We are live with AJ Garcia. Do check him out. He is the podcast host of the new podcast, Wook Stutters. W-O-K-E Stutters. Do check that out. AJ, let's switch gears for a moment. And now let me invite you into my time machine. That is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. AJ, what is your earliest childhood memory? Um, I think I must have been four or five and it was back uh, in Caracas, Venezuela, which is where I was born. Um, and I was wearing, I think it was Halloween, and I was wearing a, um, a Superman costume, running around with my um, uh, ortho, uh, orthopedic shoes that I had wow. uh, on. Um, and I remember just running around my grandparents' uh, terrace over and over and over and over in circles. Uh, now, I don't know if that's actually a memory I have or just many pictures that I've seen yeah. uh, of me doing that. But that's like one of the things that really stick out to me. Wow. So did you say how old you were? Sorry. I, I was like three or four. Wow. Why do you think this memory while you're three or four sticks out so clear? You know, I, I love uh, superheroes. Uh, I think I've, I've always had a thing for superheroes, uh, you know, both uh, fictional and non-fictional uh, superheroes. Um, and just the ability of people and what they're about and, and, and what they're capable of doing. Uh, it doesn't just extend to, you know, the supernatural or, you know, like the comic book superheroes that we see. Uh, so I guess, you know, being, being in a Superman costume, right. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I want to be uh, exceptional and I, I want to try my hardest at anything that I do. Um, it is, and it was just a very, very beautiful memory that I had uh, yeah. of my hometown. So that's amazing. Well, can I add to the interpretation that you create? Well, can I offer an interpretation added to what you said to the thought picture you created in my mind? Sure. I love the idea that we spoke about putting on the costume of becoming an extrovert because of the need to helping others and the beautiful aspect of what the costume gives you is the opportunity to take it off and be that introvert but the opportunity is amazing because it's a choice and all of us have that choice and you've taken that choice to put on that costume time and time again despite the challenges despite the hardships and that is very fascinating that sounds like it's right on right right on the spot there it's it's perfect mm. that that's and it's yeah I'm, I'm able to do that take off that costume whenever i, I need some time to just you know, to myself yeah. and refocus. Well, EJ, if we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? Um, when I was 12, that was 1997. And I just immigrated to the United States and I didn't really speak English. So I was trying to just listen to what other kids were listening to. And I remember um, uh, Puff Daddy's uh, I'll Be Missing You um, song, which was extremely popular back then. And I didn't even know what the words meant. Uh, but just very catchy beat and very it, it kind of almost made you cry even though you didn't know what the lyrics were yeah. um so yeah that that was i think a song that i definitely remember from that time yeah it's fascinating how it connects right like your entire life is constant consistently moving to the point where it's always you telling someone i'll be missing you right <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, everything just people come and go all the time. Yeah. And especially when you're an expat, when you're an expat living abroad. Uh, I've been in Seoul, in Seoul, South Korea for since 2004. Uh, and just a lot of people just come and go, come and go, come and go. Um, not, you know, it's not about just passing away, but, you know, just you meet so many people. And after looking through your podcast, I was thinking like, wow, he must know so many people. Yeah. I think it's extremely, extremely fascinating there it is that's that word again <laughs> fascinating it's a, it's a good catchy word it is right it is it is all right my friend well we have arrived at our destination but before we get off of this time machine there's a small declaration form so it's yes or no possibly a bit more aj we're going to go quickly here 
Sure. Have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Um, I have a three-year-old daughter, so I hope that she picks up some of my skills. Hmm. Um, so yes, yes. Now, my, you my said your wife, daughter. so you're married, right? Yes, you're I am. Yes. Right. Yes. You have one daughter. Do yes. you believe in God? I do. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Uh, definitely. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. Oh, what about three hours a week? No. Wow. What about <laughs> screen time, the phone and or the computer? More than eight or less than eight hours a day? Um, I want to say less than eight because I'm always doing other things. I'm always multitasking, so I, I'm not 100% focused on, on the screen, but I would say, so I would say less than eight. EJ, after 1,001 conversations in three months, in 2016, I came up with a workbook, and the name of it is yours, and it stands for your own unique real self. Connected to that is your own unique real statement, amongst other things. But if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, your mission, if you would, what would that be? Um, I think I'm just going to go with my tagline and, you know, be a voice for the voiceless. Yeah, there we go. Love it. AJ, this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Uh, first, I want to thank you for having me on the podcast. And uh, to your audience, just, you know, whatever it is that you want to do in life, just do it. Uh, life is too short. Um, just start it. Do it. Get it done. Um, you, you will not regret it. Love it. EJ Garcia, again, this was a great pleasure. Be, um, thank you so much for being on what is inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic, it's a disease that's not acute but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.